Are you kidding me? Norma, I told you a million goddamn times. 2% of Mikado's afternoon milk. She's gonna taste the extra skim, and who do you think she's gonna take it out on? Me. Oh, and find out what the holdup is on my trademark claim on Lit Up. Nigel, you're back a week early. I was going to holiday an extra week, but I was rejuvenated after only two days in the native clays at Guangzhou. You're glowing. And I can't wait to see Mikado. The lovely lass is here, I see. No, she's not here. Then who's that for? That's for me. It's my afternoon milk. It's a spot. Gotta run. Lewis? Where is she? At the best cat spa in the city. Getting her nails buffed and her paws polished. You spoil her. She spoils me. Call me when she's back. I will. Rachel, Lewis, Code Red. See you leave my office. Norma gave me a look. She's on her side. Rachel, concentrate. I don't even know if I'm on your side. This isn't right. She wants to be my cat. No, you want her to be your cat. You don't understand. This past week has been the best week of my life ever since. Bruno, I understand. But you can't keep Mikado. She's Nigel's cat. Well said. Ah, Nigel. How did you. By doing what any self respecting cat owner would do equipping her with an RFID, a radio frequency identifier integrated circuit. Why would you hide my prized possession? Is that what she is to you? A possession? What she is to me is between me and her. You're right. He's right. I'm sorry. I'm not ready. Lewis. He was supposed to be gone for two weeks. We had a verbal contract. I would have custody for two weeks. It was a babysitting arrangement. One that I was mentally, emotionally, and physically prepared for. And accordingly, I am legally entitled to Mikado for one more week. That is not the law. There's actually precedent. Warminsky v. Mitchell, 1974. I have a meeting, after which I will collect what is rightfully mine. That was a stall. Because the truth is, Nigel's right. She's not your cat. You've got to let her go. I can't help but notice you've come empty handed. Not exactly. You're suing me for ownership of Mikado. On what grounds? On the grounds that I provide a better home because you're constantly flying around the world. Mary Poppins doesn't get custody of the children in her care. The Von Trapp children fell in love with Maria. She became their mother. Because their mother was dead. There's no legal basis for this. You're confident in that fact? Most assuredly. Then let's put it to our own jury. You're suggesting a mock trial? You get to prove you're the better man in front of our associates. You agree to hand her back the moment the verdict is in? I agree to let you say goodbye to her the moment that you're defeated. <laughs> Fa Teng Gim. Whatever the hell that means. Mr. Litt, how would you describe Mikado's well-being when she came under your care? Well, Mikado's physical needs were taken care of. But there's more to a cat than its physical condition. They're highly emotional creatures. And were her emotional needs tended to? Calls for speculation. He's not the cat whisperer. He can't testify to Mikado's thoughts, which you should have objected to. Sorry, sir. Very well. Mr. Litt, without speaking for Mikado, 
would you describe for the court her emotional condition? When Mikado first entered my home, she was aloof and standoffish. She's a cat. Sorry, I'll wait my turn. She was listless, you know? Like, I would take her out to see a bird or a dog, and there'd just be nothing. You know what I think? Mm -hmm. I think that she was the victim of neglect due to the absence of a consistent father figure because he's traveling all the time. I object. To what? To you letting him talk about my cat that way. You changed the rules to get Miss Zane. I'm changing the rules. I'm going to represent myself. But You're I... dismissed. Getting hot in here, Nesbitt? Mr. Litt, I'll ask you not to address the defendant directly. I'm not the defendant. This isn't a criminal trial. Well, it should be. Where were we? You were describing the deplorable condition in which you found Mr. Nesbitt's cat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have portrayed yourself as the kind-hearted savior of this feline soul. Is that correct? Yeah. I believe I brought up the best in her. So you have a way with your charges, a velvet glove, so to speak. I guess you could say I'm built that way. So you're a good parent, uh, a role model. No one could say otherwise. So if one of your charges were to say you were hostile, cruel, prone to kicking the proverbial dog, would that be a lie? My treatment of felines is what's of issue here. I thought it was your parenting skills, your ability to mold and shape gently. Uh, but that's not what This I'm... jury knows all about your parenting skills, which involve berating, belittling, screaming, sadism. Objection! Objection. You can object to all you like, but as I said, this jury knows that that man is not what he portrays himself to be. And what about you? You think molding and shaping is accomplished by abandoning your charges and sending the occasional memo while you're off mudding in the Yang Sea? I'd like to call my next witness. Oh, really? What witness? You didn't declare a witness. He's a hostile witness. And I'm afraid he's hostile to you. I call Harold Gunderson to the stand. Holy shit, we're in trouble. We need a 10-minute recess. Mr. Gunderson, you are currently an associate at Bratton Gould. At what firm did you previously work? I worked here. And who was your supervisor? That man, Lewis Litt. Really, Harold? Let the record show that Mr. Gunderson indicated Mr. Litt. Tell me about Mr. Litt's guidance. Lewis believes in teaching by fear. Your Honor, I'd just like to state for the record that the witness is speaking into an imaginary microphone. You're speaking to an imaginary microphone. That's what I mean. You know what, fine, I'm done, proceed. Would you characterize him as a, a screamer, a tyrant, petty and vindictive? All of the above. He didn't try to gently sculpt your future like blown glass. He called me an idiot, an imbecile, and an embarrassment to the legal profession. That sounds harsh. My therapist says that I have scars on my psyche. Hearsay. I could call said therapist. Oh, that'd be lovely, except it still has nothing to do with a cat. Uh, bear with me, I'm getting there. Uh, tell me about Bruno. He was Lewis's cat. I was made to take care of him. He didn't do it himself? No. Do you like cats, Harold? No. I'm allergic. I don't even know what to do with them. But he left this cat, his cat, in your care. What happened? Hey, you know what? This would be a good time to object. I can't, Lois. It's a valid line of questioning. What happened, Mr. Gunderson? He died a day later. And what did he say to you prior to that day? He said he might as well have left his cat with Michael Vick. 